Good morning, this is Bruce and uh, welcome to my shop. Uh, this is a continuation of the Friday mayhem in Bruce's shop. Um, we've, um, we've got a, a swag of jobs that we're getting through and there's some that we're still working on. And um, the one that we're going to showcase here at the moment is a torque wrench nut that's used for, uh, in the oil and gas industry for breaking out. Uh, this is, this is a, a part, a nut, um, but this, this nut uh, has a, um, a torque wrench that goes onto it to, uh, to, to make and break the, this off, unscrew it off the tool. Uh, this, this tool could be 10, 12 metres long, or let's say 9 metres long anyway. Um, <clears throat> so I made up, uh, in 2012, I made up a, a tool uh, that, that is used to, um, to connect into those teeth and open it up. And um, I got a call late last week saying the teeth have been sheared off in the torque machine and we need it urgently to, to break out a tool uh, that we have to inspect and, and maybe repair in, uh, things inside. So I went back into my history and of course every job I do um, has a job card for it. And in that job card will be the general details of what, I've, um, of what the job is and it may have a reference to drawings as well. So I dragged out uh, that when I made this one was in t late 2012, uh, four years ago, um, or three and a half years ago. So I went back and this is part of that job card um, and what this, the, the, this card shows me um, and on the flip side as well. And there's more cards, there's more pieces to this. And what it's telling me is how I reset once I started cutting these 22 teeth, uh, how uh, after I'd cut them roughly through, how I reset the X and the Y and, um, and the number of holes on the divisions uh, in order to finish off the, um, uh, finish off the teeth, uh, teeth build. Now, this time what I've done is I've gone out and I've bought a, um, a carbide 12 mil um, roughing or corn cob style um, mill cutter and I'm using that uh, to do this and so I'm doing a, a much much more aggressive than the previous time I've got to get this through this quickly so I'm, I'm doing a 6 mil depth cut with a 12 mil corn cob which is half diameter uh, I've no coolant so I'm just working my way around so I'm going to do the first cut and then I'll come back and, and re adjust to to finish it off. What I'm also going to do here um, is uh, I have these drawings that have been supplied uh, by the client um, by the client They've, uh, there's a few drawings here and I can't divulge all the stuff but these drawings um, show and that's the way I built the previous one they show the root of the tooth as being a straight cut uh, and I think this is the reason why they've sheared before and um, so I might be working myself out of a job here but I want to radius that bottom uh, to give it more strength at that point and I can't see any reason why um, the bottom of the, the tooth can't be a bit radiused and, and, um, and give that extra strength. <coughs> So that's what I plan to do, and, with, and without further ado, uh, with further ado, first of all I'm wearing this a bomb shirt, first time. Um, it's about 17 sizes smaller than Adam's of course, <coughs> because I'm only a little bloke, a bit fat here, but I'm a little bloke. Uh, the other thing is, um, uh, the good news is, and I'll come back to that at another stage, is I'm going to California in June to be part of the uh, A-team um, at the uh, the big bash, at Stan's big bash. Uh, conducive with that, there's a whole range of things that are going to happen, uh, but we'll do that. We'll deal with that separately. And uh, and I encourage anybody who um, who wants to be part of, of that, then they should um, they should get on board. Secondly, um, I got a letter, and I'll showcase that at a separate time from Keith Fenner. And thank you for our. Um, our contribution to the 2015 
what's in your box giveaway and a beautiful letter and I'll showcase it to you. Anyway, without further ado, I'll show you how we're cutting at least one uh, of these teeth. And I'll just bring that, I'll bring that uh, camera in. I'm learning some more tricks of this trade here. Um, let me get that down there and let me come in a bit closer. We're running it at, at, at um, let me see here. We're running at 930 RPM uh, and uh, we're just going straight through, plunging through uh, the single cut. And I'm doing it by hand, uh, not with a feed, with an auto feed. No movement here. But really, really wonderful cut. If I had coolers, I could probably be up that speed quite a lot and, uh, and triple tick. Now from here, I'll just turn that around again. Um, maybe bring it down a bit. Bear with me. There we go. Now, there's 22, 22 teeth, so I'll put on a 33 hole plate and I do four turns and three holes. So here we go. Um, release off, of course. One, two, three, four, and three holes. And then we move the segments on uh, to the next one, lock it up, um, and we can cut the next one. Just getting the sound effects again. There we go. Then we swing around again. One, two, three, four, and three holes. Remembering that when you're setting up these segments, um, three holes means not you don't count the hole you're in. You've got one, two, three holes, and that's the way you set your segment up. Uh, if you if you set it counting that hole, then you're going to run out. It's, uh, it's not going to work. So those, whatever number of holes on the on the plate, that is in, in addition to that one where you where you're locked in each time. Um, we'll just come back on that, and we'll show a bit more. concentrating on the camera and not on doing the right thing and that's locking it up. And we've got a little bit of play there in the backlash so that's just showing you what not to do. We'll do another one and um, we'll do what? One, two, three, four and three holes. Make sure we lock it up. So there you have it, um, and uh, we'll continue on with this, and we may flick another one later on when we're coming towards the finishing. Have a good weekend.